Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Preston, aka Mr. Travels. I have my wife right here. Hey. And so today we're gonna to be talking about the Mark Twain house. Now, as you can see, I'm downstairs in the Bat Cave. Uh, I got my wife here. I don't know why, you know, she ain't allowed. But so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. So, but uh, so we first want to talk about the Mark Twain house, okay? So it's actually located at 351 Farmington Avenue. Harper, Connecticut, obviously. It's open seven days a week from 10 to 4.30, okay? So don't worry about like you're gonna miss it or anything like that because it's open seven days, all right? So for adults, which is the age 17 to 64, is roughly $21. Children six to 16 is roughly $13, okay? Now children under six are free. So hopefully you got some kids that's under six, okay? And for you seniors out there, 65 and up, it's $19, all right? So Parking is free, so you don't have to worry about that. So they, you know, cut costs on that way. And then it's also recommended to also uh, purchase your tickets in advance. So that's what we did uh, when we went. Uh, definitely got the tickets before we even arrived in, in, um, in the state. All right, so to visit the home, you have to go by a guided tour. That's literally a non-negotiable. So um, you can roam outside on the grounds, you know, like I said, and, you know, just look around and stuff like that. But once you go inside, you have to have a guided tour, okay? So, spoiler alert, i.e. the reason why we're in my basement is that you cannot take any pictures or videos inside the house, all right? So, once you're outside the house, you can take as many pictures or videos as you want. So, the home is absolutely gorgeous. It's a red brick home, and it is massive. Actually, if you didn't know this, the National Geographic deemed this house one of the best 10 homes in the world. Sound like they don't get out much. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, is, it is beautiful inside and out. And the famous Edward Potter was the architect. And at that time, he had done beautifully, beautifully with the architecture in that time frame. So it was pretty much an honor to have him working on that home. And the construction began August of 1873. Yeah, so so actually, let me just start from the beginning as far as, so once, once you enter the property, off the property, but um, I guess the little foyer area of like, you know, where the museum or where the tour starts, you will go upstairs, you'll pass through the building and you'll walk through another building. And once you come through that second building, it'd be like a little opening and then you'll see the beautiful house, right? It's all, like I said, like with red or brown, reddish brown um, house, massive. I mean, completely massive, right? We'll get a little bit more details later. But so once you go inside, you kind of feel like you're in a church. All right, so that's not by coincidence. Uh, so the tour guy, she told us that the Edward Potter guy, um, he literally was known for just making or designing um, churches. So that's the reason why you have a church feel to it. I mean, once you get in there, you'll see that, I mean, like, oh, it's a cathedral, you know? So, and like, it's so much, like, so many details. It's very, very intricate. Oh, my gosh. Like, words cannot explain it. Like, you definitely have to, have to see it. And also, by the way, the tour guide would be a character. So, uh, we had his daughter. I can't remember uh, the daughter's name, but we had the daughter. It was pretty cool. Um, she really stayed in character, like, the whole time. Uh, she didn't, like, break character until we got done with the tour. Right. So, bravo to her. All right. But so the house was completed in September 1874. All right. So roughly a year. All right. So the house, check this out, measures 11,000 square feet. That's a big ass house. It's all right. Huge. So um, especially for that time period. I mean, even now, I mean, 11,000 square feet is like a mansion. Mm -hmm. And literally it's a mansion. So you'd be like, damn, I want to become a writer. You write some books. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But so what else about the house you think? 25 rooms. Too many damn rooms to clean. Can you believe that? 25 rooms and there's only three floors. So that was pretty, pretty massive for that time period. I mean. Yeah, I mean. And and it, and it looks every bit of it. It is huge. 25 rooms. I think they had what, two kitchens? Yeah. So they had, so obviously this is, you know, 1800s. So, you know, uh, Slavery has already been abolished, but they still had like, um, you know, uh, servants and things of that nature. And uh, the servants lived in the house as well, obviously. So there was in-home, in-house, whatever. And literally, 
you know, back then they actually used to have it like you can't pass through the front door. They want you to pass the food through certain little corridor type areas. So mm -hmm. they had like a maid hallway. I mean, it was a little outlandish, but that's how I guess that time period was. So what do you think the house like that would cost? So let me tell you, it was forty to forty-five thousand dollars in that time period. So in my mind, that's got to be like a million dollars or something. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell you right yeah. now, we uh, live in Virginia, and if you got an eleven thousand square foot house, I don't care where you are in Virginia, you're gonna pay at least eight nine hundred thousand dollars. That's why I'm comfortable saying at least a million in today's standard. Okay. So um, okay, what about the uh, what else you want to say about the Clemens? that they actually lived in that home for 17 years and then i think most people that know about that family they did come across some financial problems and they ended up moving to europe yeah that kind of sucks but i can i mean as a writer as a profession if you're not writing a bunch of books i mean that's what happens so most people know his works from uh, like huckleberry finn and Tom Sawyer, so that's the only stuff I really uh, know off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. But and they were required reading uh, material oh, yeah. for us in school, so yeah. I, I think most people, especially in our generation, had to read that material. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, and so you know, it's, it sucks that they ran into financial uh, ruin essentially and uh, had to move to Europe. I'm not sure which part of Europe, but essentially, once they left that area or left Hartford, they never moved back. So that's pretty, like I said, it's pretty sad for their dream home to just, you know, you had to leave after 17 years or whatever. But um, so they actually sold the property right around uh, 1903. And then it went to another family and just kind of, you know, the state uh, of Connecticut just kind of preserved it from there. But the tour is roughly, what do you think, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe? Yeah. Maybe, maybe an hour. I think it was close to an hour. I mean, the house was massive and they stopped to tell you little bits of information and fun facts. So they didn't rush it. It really felt like it was the full hour, um, but it definitely was timed because they do have tours going back to back to back and they wanna make sure that the area is completely clear before another group comes in. Yeah, so like the day that we went, it was raining. So that kind of yeah, sucked. Um, it did. So I would say like this, so we didn't know, and I say this is on me, uh, that I didn't do my full research on this, that since uh, Mark Twain and Harriet Beecher is right next, do it in the same day, do it in the same day. Uh, I made that mistake and I had the Mark Twain one day and then the next day uh, we had Harriet Beecher stolen. I was pissed off because we had to catch two Ubers. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not rich. The same yeah, scenario. I was like, damn. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but like I said, it is what it is. Uh, lesson learned, let you guys know, so that way you don't make the same mistake as uh, we did. And then, like I said, both tours, about an hour. Now, you can ask as many questions as you want, so I guess the tour can drag on a little bit. Uh, obviously, this is uh, during a pandemic that we went, so uh, they kind of keep the tour uh, small. So that's why I said get your tickets in advance, all right? And that's just with anything, whether you go to a museum, ball game, whatever you want to go, get your tickets in advance, okay? So uh, overall... I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, so I said, the tour guide was very knowledgeable. They stayed in character. Um, wasn't that pricey, as you as I um, said earlier with the prices. Um, and like I said, for me being a, a real traveler, it was just, and it's part of history, um, especially somebody that I know or read about, I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, would I ever go back? I would, just to take better pictures and more, um, and just more videos of that. But. Uh, they also have so also when you land at the airport in uh Harford, they have a big um i guess lego set of the house and you can see it there before you even you know leave the airport and you will see what i'm talking about this thing is i mean this yeah. massive and so apparently you know mark twain was um he's heavy into smoking and uh playing uh pool billiards so you end the tour in his billiard room which is uh, pretty awesome, it's like, especially for, like I said, for that time period, 25 mm -hmm. rooms, that's that's crazy. So that's pretty much, like I said, Mark Twain. Anything else you think we missed? Yeah, so I just wanted to add that after the tour, they do let you go to this like special um, building where they have additional information, facts. Oh, they yeah. have, um, it's, it's sort of like a museum. 
to honor Mark Twain. And it's a lot of additional information that's not necessarily a part of the tour, but really good information. They've got so many amazing quotes all throughout the building. So that's what I was, I am always inspired by that the most because I absolutely love Mark Twain quotes. He was very humorous um, and just, you know, he seemed really enlightened about um, perspective and uh, just very real. Yeah. So it was pretty cool seeing some of his work being displayed in the museum and um, definitely check that out after the tour so that you can just get just some extra information and also purchase things from, I think it's like a, a quite, a store. quite a store a large store. store. It wasn't yeah. too small where you can just purchase different things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so the store and the museum part that she's referring to is literally at the place where you have to check in. So you can't miss it. All right. Uh, make sure you check out the other videos of uh, Harford and all my other stuff, too. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, it's Travis of Preston. And uh, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you've already been there. Uh, with, you know, just some of your thoughts, okay? And uh, yeah, also, hey, hey, just, just want to throw this in there for my wife. Make sure you follow my wife, all right, on uh, Instagram, okay? Uh, she's really trying to get into the space of uh, just uh, self-care, but I'll let her talk a little bit about that so she can, you know, I, I want her, just like a team, all right? So, you know what I'm saying? Work with me, work with her too. So I just I like to support self-care. I'm a social worker. So I really feel like after having a lot of stress throughout the day and as well as anyone else that works and just lives life, they need to have some sort of way to take better care of themselves holistically. And so I started an Instagram and it's called life underscore is underscore her underscore name. And I just post very motivational, um, self-care related, posts and just try to inspire people throughout the day yeah i think that's actually needed especially in this time uh that we're all going through all hardships yeah so um like i said everybody that's not fortunate as us or to travel or some of you guys out there so that's the reason why we're trying to like just bring positivity back through my travel through her uh you know post of uh, just just motivating others with self-care so I just want to throw that tip bit. I thought that was kind of very, very important um, just to make you guys aware of what, what she has going on because I know you guys have seen her in past videos, okay? Yeah. And she's out there too. So, all right. So this travels in Preston and my wife. Uh, we're signing out, all right? See you guys next Monday, Bye. 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, okay? Peace.